Hey kids, it's Miss Sasha. Welcome back to art class today. I'm super excited to be here. Today, we're gonna talk all about patterns found in nature and patterns you can make from nature. Patterns can be found everywhere. What is a pattern? Well, a pattern exists when a set of numbers like one, two, one, two, colors, red, red, blue, red, red, blue, shapes, circle, triangle, square, circle, triangle, square, gestures like happy, sad, happy, sad. When you do that in a pattern, images could be in a pattern as well, like a tractor, a barn, a tractor, a barn. And sounds, like when you're hitting on a drum or a piano, you do that in a pattern, and then the pattern makes the music. So it's something that's repeated over and over again. This brings me to my next question. What is a pattern in nature? Well, it's patterns that are found in the natural world. So this includes things like leaves or spirals, which could be found on a seashell, such as this one, a little spiral right? Um, a spider's web is formed in a spiral, a spiral staircase. Um, animals. Animals have patterns like zebras, giraffes, tigers, even snake skin has a pattern, right? Um, honeycombs. A bumblebee's honeycomb is in the shape of a hexagon, that is also in a pattern. Desert sand, when the wind blows, it forms like these waves or ripples across the sand. A butterfly's wings, which are symmetrical, those form a pattern. Whatever's on the left is going to be on the right. That is a pattern. That's the butterfly's wings pattern. So the spider webs and even the solar system has a pattern. So why do some patterns exist in nature? <clears throat> well, animals, have patterns so that they are that they can blend in to their habitat or their environment and this is for camouflage right so when someone goes hunting they have to blend into their environment in order to hunt so they may wear camouflage or something that reflects the environment that they're hunting in but for animals that's their pattern on their fur and that helps them to blend in and things like zebras stripes are confusing to other animals or predators because they blend into the grasses or the leaves or the trees. So that's confusing. We also recognize like the spots on a giraffe as a pattern, but giraffe spots are not regular, right? They are not all the same size. They're not even all the same shape, but that is the giraffe's pattern. So other patterns are very orderly, which or like a A, B, A, B pattern, right? So the snake skin is much more orderly and that's how we know if a snake is poisonous or not, by the colors and the pattern on the snake's body. The petals on a flower, like this flower right here, see this? The petals on a flower are in a pattern. Some flowers aren't just yellow, some flowers may have purple at the tips and white on the end, but it forms the flower's petal pattern. So every flower has its own petal pattern, depending upon where it's from, or the colors, or the season, right? Also a bird's feathers, all birds have different feathers, and they have different patterns. So all feathers on a bird tell us what bird it is by their pattern, their color, the length of the pattern, Certainly a peacock's feather is a lot larger than maybe the feather on a hummingbird. Much, much different. So now is a good time to pause your video and gather all your supplies. The supplies we're gonna need today are going to be two pieces of white paper and some assorted crayons. Go ahead and pause your video. Now that you've paused your video, we can go ahead and put our supplies down in front of us. We're gonna use those in a minute. You can put your papers down, your crayons on top of that. And let's talk a little bit about some patterns that you might remember talking about in your classroom or with your homeschool teacher. Different patterns that you might talk about might be like an A, B, A, B pattern, right? So uh, those would, you could do different crayon colors, you could do different shapes. Other ones would be A, B, C. ABC, remember it has to continue to repeat itself. 
So if our supplies are down, we're going to warm up by doing some patterns with our hands. So let's start with an AB pattern, right? A, B, A, B. So we could go clap, snap, clap, snap, clap, snap. So do it with me. Ready? Clap, snap, clap, snap, A, B, A, B. That was easy, right? Let's do a different one. Can you think of something else, a different kind of pattern that you may have talked about in your classroom? Hmm, perfect. A, B, C. A, B, C. That means we have to have three different objects in our pattern and they have to repeat itself, itself. So let's do this with a color. Let's use primary colors. That'll be fun. Red, yellow, blue. Red, yellow, blue. Red, yellow, blue. We can clap that out too, watch. Red, yellow, blue. Red, yellow, blue. A, B, C. A, B, C. Perfect. Shake it out. Shake it out. Woo! Okay, let's do another. We have three more to talk about. Let's do an A, A, B, B. A, A, B, B. But let's use pets for our pattern. A pet pattern, right? We can do cat, cat, dog, dog. Cat, cat, dog, dog. Cat, cat, dog, dog. Cat, cat, dog, dog. A, A, B, B. A, A, B, B. It just repeats itself over and over in the same pattern. And then we can find out how many different pattern segments there are in that pattern by counting them out. All right, let's do A, B, B. And we're going to use shapes. Shapes is perfect for doing an A, B, B pattern. Let's do circle, square, square, circle, square, square, circle, square, square. A, B, B, A, B, B, A, B, B. Yay, shake it out, shake it out. We have one more to talk about. Let's do an A, A, B, kind of opposite of an A, B, B. A, A, B, and let's use some objects that we can find in nature. Let's do leaf, leaf, rock, leaf, leaf, rock, leaf, leaf, rock. A, A, B, A, A, B. A, A, B. It just keeps repeating itself. That's what makes it a pattern. Okay, we're gonna get started. We're gonna go on a pattern walk scavenger hunt. So we're not gonna have to leave our classroom or our seat. That seems impossible, doesn't it? Not so much. Because we can pretend that we're gonna get all bundled up if it's cold outside. You could pretend to put your hat on. You could put your gloves on. You could put your coat on, right? Or it could be in the summertime and we could take a walk in a beautiful park. So we can kind of walk in the park, right? Looking around for patterns found in nature. Look around, look around in your classroom because we're pretending that we're going on a scavenger hunt, right? You could also take a drive to the ocean and walk on the beach. And while you're on your way driving, you can look out the window, right? Or when you're walking down the beach, you can check the sand, look at the ocean, find all kinds of patterns found in nature. So, one thing we could bring would be a camera to take pictures. I'm gonna put that in my backpack, right? Take pictures. We could even bring a magnifying if we wanna find little tiny patterns all around us, okay? So, let's put everything in our backpack, get ready, and we're gonna start our drawing. So I want you to get one piece of paper right here, and we're going to take the bottom of the paper, it's horizontal in front of us, and I want you to fold it up from your belly to the corners, just like this. We're going to make nature patterns. We're gonna find things in nature and we're gonna make a pattern, and then we're gonna to get to draw it. How does that sound? So I want you to look around your classroom or look around your nature area and find different things that we might be able to use in a pattern. I'm looking, I'm looking, and I found a little acorn. Look, I'm gonna put this right here in my little pattern pocket. There's my little acorn. I'm gonna make an A, B pattern. So I need to find one other object that I can put in my pattern pocket to make a nature pattern. How about a little stick? Here's a little stick. 
putting my pattern pop thread. If I'm making an AB pattern, I have to repeat that pattern. So what would I need in there next? Anybody? How about an acorn? Perfect. To put that little acorn in there. A, B, A, B. Here's my little stick. And an acorn. And how about another stick? And how about an acorn? Look at that. We've made an A, B, A, B, A, B, A pattern. We just keep repeating it. So now you can go ahead and get your crayons and we're going to go ahead and draw this AB pattern. Watch this. I'm going to show you how I drew it. Right there. All right, go ahead and grab your crayons and let's start drawing our AB pattern. Okay, the first thing I want you to draw is your acorn. Go ahead and get a brown. Actually, you can draw your acorn whatever color you want. I'm going to draw mine right here. I'm going to put a little U shape and he has like a little hat on, look. And he has a little stem, right? And then the next one is a stick. It doesn't have to be just like that stick. Look at this one. I even added a leaf onto this stick. As long as your pattern is an A-B pattern and you found your little items in nature, then it's a pattern. There you go. I'll draw one more. Little acorn. You can even add some design to it and you can color it in. Go ahead and work on your AB pattern for a minute. I'll give you some time to repeat your pattern. Acorn stick, acorn stick, acorn. Your turn, go ahead. Hmm, I was gonna tell you the hexagon or the is a shape with six sides and it's one of the most common shapes found in nature. So you'll find that hexagon shape in a honeycomb like for the bees, snowflakes, a, a fly's compound eye, so if you could take your magnifying glass and get really close to that fly's eye, you could see that it's in the shape of a hexagon. Hexagons are everywhere. It's the most popular shape found in nature, right? Go ahead, add to your acorn. Some acorns might even still be a little bit green, huh? So maybe you could add a little green to your acorn, right? I'm going to add a little green to mine, and then we've been practicing not pressing too hard sometimes when you're drawing, right, so you can still see your details. Here's my little stick. If you want to add leaves to the stick, that's fine. You're not going to find all the same shaped sticks in nature, so it's okay if your sticks are slightly different, right? Perfect. <clears throat> when you're done with that, you can go ahead and label it. A, B, A, B, right? I'm going to do mine with a green crayon. A, B, A, B, A. And if I had more space, I could continue on, right? When you're all done with that, let's make one more pattern found in nature. All right, I'm going to clear this pattern out while you're still coloring. When you're all done, let's think of something else we can find in nature. If you look around, maybe you could find a leaf, right? What else could you find? If you were walking along the path, you might find a little rock, right? So here's some rocks. Let's do an A, A, B pattern. Look at that. A, A, B. <laughs> A, A, B. There, I have a rock, rock, leaf, rock, rock, leaf. That'd be easy to draw, right? I'm going to draw my rock. I think I'm gonna do an orange rock, right? Here's a rock, rock, and how about a green leaf? I'll make mine real simple, right? Rock. Rock, leaf, there you go. Go ahead and draw that A, A, B, A, A, B pattern. I'm gonna add a little stem. Right, there you go. Some rocks can be colorful if they're found on the beach, right? I've seen some orange colored 
rocks or walking al along like a river, right? And it's going wavy. You might find some different colored rocks. I found little red rocks, orange rocks. So just use your imagination, right? Remember, we're going on a scavenger hunt in the classroom. A, A, B, A, A, B. So these are patterns that we found by using things from nature. But if you look all around, there are patterns that are found in nature that are just there because that's their pattern. Like, look at this. What do you think this is? These are all very, very close up pictures of different things found in nature. So we can go ahead and identify some of these. This is that hexagon shape, look. See, it's five sides, it's a hexagon. But what is this a close up of? This is like if I had my magnifying glass and I got really, really close. What is this shape, this pattern? If you guessed a turtle shell, you're right. But because a hexagon is one of the most common shapes found in nature, what is this? This is also a hexagon. What is this a close up of? I'm gonna give you a hint. It's some kind of a delicious fruit and you don't eat the skin. It's a pineapple. You guessed it. It's a close up of a pineapple. So here we go, look at this. This is a close up of a honeycomb. We've talked about this a few times. Bees, little honeycomb, right? When you're all done with coloring your patterns, go. it's time to go ahead and get your other piece of paper ready to go. You can put this one underneath. You can put it under your chair or underneath the paper. Either is fine. All right. And there we go. The next thing we're going to draw is going to be shapes found in nature. So if you have your little piece of paper like this, I want you to go ahead and fold it like we did before up to your tummy and press. Great. And then you can fold it the other way, which is sometimes hard. So this would be more like a book. So it's flat. We're gonna fold it over. Don't turn your paper and press. Hard to do. I'm gonna do it again with you. From the bottom, it's a horizontal. From the bottom to the tummy, up to the top. Back down. Don't turn your paper and fold this one like a book and press. We're trying to make a crisscross in the middle like that. Okay? You got it? Okay. So, the next thing we're going to make is patterns found in nature. Okay, we're going to leave this pattern up here and we're going to draw a few of these, okay? Look at this little turtle shell. See, it looks a lot like that, right? It's a hexagon shape. And here's a little zebra. This is a little zebra sculpture. But look, there's a little pattern. Look, just like this zebra up here. You can't mistake this for a giraffe or a tiger. This is a zebra's pattern. It's black and white. And mostly, they are symmetrical from the top. If he went down his spine, he'd be the same on both sides, which is different from like a giraffe. They have different sized shapes for their spots, right? Okay. So go ahead and grab any color that you would like, and we're gonna trace over our lines that our paper made, our little creases or our folds, okay? Perfect. All right. We're gonna draw some of these patterns that we find in nature. Um, I wanna show you this too, because some of them look so similar, but they're completely different animals. Like, look at this. This is a fish scale. Right? But this is a peacock's feathers. But they have the same curved shape, right? They're very, very similar. These are very different, right? The zebra to this leopard. These are called little rosettes. His design is called a rosette. Kind of looks like a rose. I think this is really cool. Look, this is the shape of a hurricane. This is our spiral. And this is the spiral of a centipede. So this is the same pattern found in nature, only this is weather, and this is an, a little critter, a little insect, right? Okay, so I like to do the spiral. Let's go ahead and do a spiral for one of our spots here. If you start in the middle, a little circle, 
right? Don't close it up and get bigger and bigger and bigger all the way around. Don't go outside of your box, right? Any color you want to make your spiral. On this one, I did a little curve line, right? Some people might want to do, you might want to do circles in, inside of your spiral. They might get bigger if your spiral has more space all the way around. I just did mine in purple because I can come back with another color and continue on my pattern, right? So go ahead and add something interesting. You could do curved lines, you could do circles, whichever ones you want, right? Okay, so patterns can be found in all your different subjects. They can be found in math, we talked about that, like one, two, one, two, right? In the arts, by making a different design or a pattern in your painting or in your sculpture, right? In science, we talked about weather, right? In English, our language arts, A, B, A, B, right? It helps us to learn how to read. And so there's different things that have cycles, like the weather changes on the earth can be divided into four seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall. And then it starts all over again, winter, spring, summer, fall. Winter, spring, summer, fall. That is a pattern. That is an earth-changing pattern. It goes around and around every season. We have four seasons, right? Okay, go ahead and get another color, whatever color you want, and maybe color in part of your pattern. I did pink. I'm going to do every other circle pink. If you accidentally do one next to the other, that's fine, right? I did every other circle pink. That means I should do maybe every other circle orange. And now I have a orange pink, orange pink pattern. I made an AB pattern. There you go. Go ahead and add to yours. Let's see. There are other things that follow a growth pattern that we talk about in science, and that's called a life cycle. So butterflies have a life cycle, and their life cycle is butter, it's egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. And every different butterfly does that same pattern. So that's a pattern in science, right? Egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. And then a new egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. That's like an A, B, C, D pattern. I don't know if we've talked about those, right? Good. You can go ahead and add another color if you'd like. Maybe in between every little circle, you want to put a little line. Maybe you want to put a wavy line or a zigzag line. Maybe you want to color those all in. That's fine. This is a pattern, a spiral pattern like this hurricane or this centipede, the spider web. Those are all spiral patterns. Go ahead and add to your pattern. Y'all are doing a great job. Let's see. Oh, there are some animals that, that move from one place to another every year. It's the same thing, and that's called migration, right? It's part of their life cycle of the animals. Hummingbirds migrate. Humpback whales migrate. Uh, the snow goose migrates. I think penguins do the same cycle every year. They move on, they go find food, and then they come back and they take care of their eggs, and it goes around and around. That's a pattern. That's a cycle, okay? Good. Let's move on to a different um, pattern. Let's do, let's do some fish scales. Get whatever color you want. And those fish scales are like little curved lines, right? And they kind of touch each other. Look, curve, 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 curve. Over here, I did like a parrot's feather. So these feathers had different lengths, right? This one was pointy. This one went long. This was little. So you could do your fish scales, they look pretty much the same, look. Some of you might want to do it like this, and that's fine, right? Good, and you can add some detail, maybe at the bottom of each scale, you want to make it darker. Fish are pretty colorful, their scales are pretty colorful, and each fish has a different type of pattern for its scales and different colors makes each fish unique to itself, right? You can't get them confused. 
good. Go ahead and add to your fish scale pattern, just like this one up here. Good. You know, clothing has patterns. Like there's a, you can use a pattern to make clothing, which is different from a pattern. Um, the time of the day, right? It goes one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, all the way around till it starts back over at one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. You guys learn about months in the year. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and then it starts over again. And then we have a different year, right? That's how time changes. That's how the days and the months move on and on and on, even the days of the week, right? Do you come to school on Saturday? No. How about Sunday? No. Monday, we're like, oh, it's the beginning of the week. And Wednesday, it's the middle. And Friday, we're like, wahoo, it's Friday. So that's a pattern for the days of the week, okay? It goes around and around. Perfect. You can go ahead and add another color maybe to your scales. I'm going to add blue. Maybe a little zigzag. Maybe some of you might have done every other scale. That's fine. Sometimes when the scales get closer to the fish's head, they get smaller, and they're bigger in the middle, and they're smaller at the tail. You can always practice that at a later date, right? Because when you're walking around, you might notice more patterns now that we've talked about patterns in nature, right? They're fa things found in nature. They can't be man-made. These are nature patterns. Should we try to draw maybe a little hexagon? They're kind of hard. We could do it together. Watch. Two flat sides, so let's do a flat side and a flat side. And then it makes a little point, look. Boop, 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 boop. They're hard. And then you kind of have to keep adding to it. All right, flat, flat, point, point. It's okay if they're not perfect. What if you did this? That would be okay, look. Right? And we could be making maybe this turtle shell. Maybe you're turning it into a pineapple or a honeycomb, right? You can turn it into whatever you want. Remember, it's the most popular pattern found in nature. Maybe I'm gonna color my edges darker. You kind of have to practice drawing those hexagons. That's a hard shape to master, right? Look. Yeah. And maybe I'll add another color. Maybe I'll get lighter as I get to the middle. And maybe a little bit of yellow in the middle. How's that look? And you can keep filling it in if you don't want to leave any white space. Your pattern can go all the way to the edge. You can use this as like your little pattern journal. So if you go on your little pretend scavenger hunt or your little nature walk, you can bring some paper and some crayons and you can find patterns in nature and draw them in here. You can turn the paper over and have four more on the back, right? I left the space open for you to find something else maybe in your, in your head, using your imagination, if you're thinking about walking on the beach or if you are thinking about going to the park, maybe come up with a pattern that you wanna draw and put into this extra spot right here. And also remember that when you're out, you can find a few different items to make your nature pattern, right? And build one on the sidewalk. That's always fun. Well, today was great. We learned all about patterns found in nature and patterns that you can make from nature. Look all around to see what patterns you can find. Can you make your very own nature pattern? Mm, from animals, fur to seashells, butterfly wings to solar system, patterns are everywhere. So keep your eyes open and find patterns. Can't wait to see you next week.